Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dwarf Fortress Academy, your com comprehensive guide to surviving in a game meant to kill you. Right now we are in the uh, Site Picker map. That's not really a technical name, but I, that's what I'm just going to call it. If you watched my previous episode of Dwarf Fortress Academy, this is the world that I generated with the settings that I chose. So if you want to see all the settings in this world, go back to that uh, video. If we look at the map, we have a... We can see that this is a very, very large map. Um, if you look at the little X, that is my cursor. That is where I'm going to pick where I want to go. And if you look, the uh, local map is the size of that X. So every single one of these X X's is like bigger than you'd think. Like this is a pretty big world. Now this looks like there's a lot of information on this page, so we're going to break it down you know, corner by corner to try and get you to have an understanding of what this this game really is and what you want to look for on Embark. So first, we're going to go through the menus. Obviously, you can see the local map in the top left. That's the actual area that you're going to be playing in. You pick an area by moving it with the U, H, U, M, K, and H keys. You can move around the local areas you see I'm doing right now. You can resize it by holding Shift and pressing those keys. That's how you manipulate the local area. Um, by using the arrow keys, you can move around your world and local region. If you look up to the top right of your screen, you can see the information about the area in which we're going to embark. Um, as you can see right now, our local area is sitting over a temperate grassland. Its temperature is warm. There can be various degrees of temperature. That's how hot it's going to be in your world. Um, the trees, the amount of trees are sparse. That's not good. Other vegetation, there's moderate. And the surroundings, which is basically, you know, your what animals are around you, like how dangerous in general is your land. It's untamed wilds, which means it's not super dangerous, it's just, it's it's never been touched by people. It's not subtle, it's settled, it's very, you know, out there, like there's dangerous stuff out there. If we move around, we can find a new area. Let's go over here. Sand desert, temperature temperate, trees scarce, other vegetation scarce, surroundings wilderness. And if you look below, you'll notice there's a name for the stream, which is, if you look over at that local map, is the blue line. That is a stream. When you are in, you really want to have a stream when you pick your local area. If we look back over to the right, we can see, if you look at the top, the name of the area you're in. And if you look down below all that, it says little soil, aquifer, shallow, and deep metals. That's the characteristics of your map. Um, the very deep soil or little soil indicates how much layers of soil you'll find in your map. That's important. You really want soil. Um, aquifers are basically underwater lakes, small little lakes underwater. They're kind of a pain, but they'll provide you with underwater water, which sounds redundant. Shallow metals and deep metals are basically if you're going to find various like iron or gems and where you're going to find them, either shallow or deep. So those are also very ideal. As you can see, this is a mountain. If we look over back to the lo local area right now, that right there, that like giant thing, that's a city. You cannot embark on top of a city. So we can't do that. If you look, it's called Otho Synod. That's on the right-hand side. Brook the Freckles of Turing, which that's not really important. We come up here to the purple. This is a temperate savanna, which is warm. There's sparse amounts of trees, moderate other vegetation, but the surroundings are haunted. If you're looking for a challenge in Dwarf Fortress, go to a sinister or haunted or terrifying location. That was controlled by the uh, natural savagery that we chose early on. This region was created because we chose a medium uh, level of savagery. So, yeah, if we just look around, we can find our perfect conditions. What we're looking for, ideally, we're looking for a either temperate or warm climate with a lot of trees, a lot of other vegetation, and not crazy surrounding conditions. So I'm just going to look around really quick. And in addition to all this, you can press tab. Tab will show you what your neighbors are. There are dwarves around here. You will find dwarves, goblins, humans, elves, and two towers. Um, the goblins, humans, elves, dwarves are always at war with the goblins. You will probably find goblins nearly everywhere, and they will they will attack you. You're hostile to them. 
Um, there are other different things that you can find, such as towers. Towers are have necromancers in them, and occasionally necromancers will come out and try and kill you. You can see the relative elevation by pressing tab a couple more times. Relative elevation isn't too important, so I wouldn't worry about it that much. You are dwarves after all, so... So we're looking for a perfect location, and I'm gonna just cut ahead till I find one. Okay, so we found a relatively ideal location. We found a temperate freshwater marsh, which is good. You don't want to have salt water because your dwarves can't drink salt, salt water. Um, temperate temperature is warm, that way my creek will not freeze. The trees, there's a woodland, which means there's quite a few trees. Other vegetation, there's moderate surroundings, wilderness. Okay, that's good. If we look down at the bottom, there is a stream, the zenith of, I want to say, battling. There are shallow clay, very deep soil, aquifers, and both varieties of metals. This is a very optimal location, and if we look over back at the local map, when it's not flashing, you'll see that my local area is on top of a brook. That is really good. You want to have a brook or some form of running water running through your fortress, because that'll provide you a near infinite source of water. That way, just in case you run out of like alcohol and stuff, you do have something to fall back on, albeit it's not preferable. If we look, the most common neighbor is up at the top, and that is dwarves. Second most common is goblins, which shouldn't be a problem too early on, then elves, then humans, and then a necromancer's tower. The civilizations around are the bolts of cremation and legendary gravel. These aren't really important information. Relative elevation, it's relatively high. Well, it's pretty low, actually. There are some, if we look, one is slopes, three, you know, medium cliffs, and zero is flat. It's a fairly hilly location. So, I think this is a good location. Um, that's going to be our embarking location. So that right there, my friends, is how to choose an embark location. You're looking for ideal conditions and where to create your fortress. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.